Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. In today's video, we're going to be going over the mystery of the Zunoqua. Now in the world of Sasquatch and Bigfoot, the Zunoqua is one of the legends that has more of a creepy tone due to the fact that the Zunoqua is said to be a creature that steals or kidnaps children. The Zunoqua is part of Kukwakiwak lore from the west coast of British Columbia. Tales of the Zunoqua or basket ogres go back hundreds and hundreds of years and describe a wild woman-like creature or female Sasquatch-like creature that is known to wear a large woven basket on her back that was used to store the children that she kidnapped. The Zunoqua was known to be extremely ugly, tall and hairy, and to have very distinct puckered lips that can be seen in virtually every piece of Zunoqua art. The Kukwakiwak masks that have been created by indigenous artists show this perfectly. It is said that the Zunoqua would approach villages at night and kidnap unsupervised children while no one was looking, place them in her basket, and carry them off to cook or smoke them at her fire. Then she would consume them in a disgusting act of cannibalism. The puckered lips that are shown in the Zunoqua art resemble the Zunoqua as she makes a hooing call to lure in her victims. She's also known to mimic the sound of people familiar to the child she's about to take say the child's mother or grandmother. Many tales tell stories of at least one clever child managing to outsmart and escape the Zunoqua, and these children flee and make it back to their village to tell their elders of the horrors that they saw. Many people say that the Zunoqua is just a scary story used to get the children to be on their best behavior. If they misbehaved, the Zunoqua would come and take you away to eat you. This would definitely be an effective tool to frighten any child that lives in a remote forest village. Don't stray too far from home or the Zunoqua will find you and carry you off to eat you. There are many tales of wild men and wild women in West Coast First Nations culture. Another Sasquatch-like creature is the Bukwas, who, in some cultures, is said to be the husband of the Zunoqua. Today we closely relate the Zunoqua to the modern idea of Sasquatch. Stories of Sasquatch are prominent in almost every North American First Nations culture, so there wouldn't really be any surprise if the Zunoqua was in fact a female Sasquatch. In her appearance, there is also descriptions of large, pendulous breasts very similar to that of Patty in the famous Patterson-Gimlin footage. The only difference is that Patty's not carrying a large woven basket, and didn't seem to be of any real threat at all. That would definitely be the main difference between your average Sasquatch report and stories of the Zunoqua. The Zunoqua has the intellect and ability to create tools, in this case, the woven basket. We don't hear many reports of Sasquatch creatures creating such things. However, there are many reports of Sasquatch manipulating tree branches and logs to create blinds or structures. There are also rare reports of Sasquatch creating piles of leaves on the ground in distinct patterns, and even weaving things such as makeshift blankets or sleeping pads to lie on. Sasquatch, or the Zunoqua, could have even observed the activities of the Kukwakiwak natives, and learned how to weave or create tools from them. And it's not just the basket weaving that is unique to the Zunoqua as a Sasquatch-like being. The ability to create and maintain a fire is also an interesting element to the legend. It is essentially the only Sasquatch tale where the creature is creating and using fire to cook food, or in this case, the children. An ability that could also have been picked up by its Kukwakiwak neighbors if the legend is in fact true. I suppose it is very interesting that nowadays there aren't any new reports of the Zunoqua, just old stories passed down from generation to generation. Did Sasquatch lose its ability to weave baskets and make fires? Kind of in the same sense that a lot of First Nations language and tradition is dying out? I suppose it is possible. But the fact remains that at least in the past hundred years, there are no new documented sightings of a Zunoqua, or a Sasquatch carrying a giant basket on its back. There are stories, however, of children disappearing in the woods under mysterious circumstances, and even stories of children being found alive who claim that they have been taken care of by bears or some form of hairy animal. 
There was also the famous case of Albert Ostman, whose story describes the experience of being kidnapped by Sasquatch and transported back to their hidden dwelling on the west coast of BC, you know, right in the area where the legends of the Zunoqua originate. I suppose we'll never really know if the tale of the Zunoqua is true or not. Was it a female Sasquatch with tool-making abilities? Was it its own type of wild man or wild woman creature? Or was it a supernatural entity? I guess it could have even been an old native woman who maybe lived on the fringes of society, or was banished for some reason. Or and maybe she even wanted to get some sort of revenge on a village and that's why she went in and took the children. Of course I'm speculating, but it's certainly fun to imagine the possibilities. Anyways, that's really all I have for today's video. If you have any more theories or if you have any stories of the Zunoqua, let me know in the comments below. I also posted a link in the description to a really well-made clay animation short film on the Zunoqua that you should definitely check out. Another thing I'd like to say uh, before I end this video is that if you want some more information on Sasquatch and the Sasquatch legends of the west coast of British Columbia, you should definitely uh, go on YouTube and search Thomas Seawood. Now Thomas is a really knowledgeable person. He's probably the only person I would actually consider an expert on the subject of Sasquatch on the British Columbia West Coast. Um, he's a member of the Kukwakiwak First Nations tribe. Um, so he is the go-to guy on like the Zunaqua and the Bukwas. Uh, if you're interested on, you know, learning more about it from somebody who's actually a part of that culture, definitely look him up, Thomas Seawood. I have a link down below in the description to a Monster X Radio podcast um, and interviewing him. So he was also part of Operation Sea Monkey back, I think, about four years ago or so. And that was a expedition that was conducted on the west coast of BC uh, by boat, where a lot of uh, people who were actually big names in the Bigfoot community actually went out on an expedition, Thomas Seawood, uh, Thomas Steenberg, Todd Neese, uh, a lot of uh, people who are very uh, knowledgeable and have a lot of experience in you know conducting Sasquatch research. They went up, did a pretty substantial expedition, probably one of the coolest Bigfoot expeditions of modern time, I would say. Um, and you can find video clips from that on YouTube as well, Operation Sea Monkey. Um, but anyways, uh, check out Thomas Seawood, check out his channel. He does have a, a little YouTube channel. He's also in probably one of the worst Bigfoot documentaries I've ever seen called Bigfoot Girl. <laughs> so if you want to see um, him in a video interview, go on Tubi TV and check out Bigfoot Girl. Um, and you'll understand why it's the worst Bigfoot documentary in history. Uh, but Thomas's interview is is good and kind of the only thing that holds that film together. So you can check that out as well. If you would like to support Mountain Beast Mysteries and make a donation to the channel, you can do so by clicking the link to our GoFundMe page in the description below. Every donation helps to take the time to make these videos and make all the future trips out into the bush possible. Thank you to everyone so far that has donated and supported the channel, you know, since the beginning. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.